My name is Ben Miller. Put my uh, Twitter handle on the board there in case anyone wants to uh, get in contact with me. Um, if you do follow me on Twitter, definitely send me a message so that I know to follow you back. I get followed by a lot of bots and things like that because I have a blog, uh, so that would, uh, would help a lot. Uh, Ten Talk is about Wireshark and Mac OS X. My specialty tends to be protocol analysis. I have an hour long talk tomorrow about protocol analysis, primarily comparing protocol analyzers. I'll talk a little bit about why you would use a protocol analyzer. Uh, but for, for this brief talk, I just want to talk about how you can do it with a Mac. Uh, when you do protocol analysis with a Mac, it is completely free. You don't need to uh, pay for any hardware, no USB adapters. You don't need to pay for software or anything like that. Uh, you can do it with the Wireshark application. You can do it with the internal adapter of a Mac. Uh, for those of you that have Macs, I would definitely encourage you to download a little document that I put together. That is a URL, uh, a shortened URL from Google. Uh, it's, it's the Google's shortened URL, which is goo.gl. And then you just have to do slash uh, capitalized QLC the number nine, lowercase m as in Miller, and uh, that's a zero at the end. I should have chose a different font, but uh, that's a zero at the end. If you are a Mac user, I certainly encourage you to go out there and uh, get that file right now. You can follow along with, uh, with the quick demonstration I'm going to go through. Uh, you can use that document later. It's a little one-page PDF. Uh, I think I put 18 steps on it, but, but really it's, uh, it, it's not particularly complicated. Um, and I'll leave that uh, link up for a few extra seconds here so you can write it down if you want to or uh, type it in if you want to. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to capture in Mac OS X, uh, a big thing to make sure is that you have the right equipment. When data goes through the air using three stream MIMO, uh, 802.11n or 802.11ac MIMO, you're not gonna be able to capture that data if, if you have two streams or if you have a single stream. And so a big part of capturing is just understanding what you're capturing with. I put together a little list of what Mac devices support if you have a Mac device that was summer of 2013 or later, uh, then you'll have 802.11ac capabilities. If, if your Mac device is earlier than that, then it'll likely be 802.11n. And it mentions there are also differences in the number of streams. Uh, a, a couple things I always like to point out, though, about uh, capturing with protocol analysis. Number one, even if you have an 802.11n device capturing, you're gonna capture almost everything that 802.11ac devices send through the air or, or receive from the air. Uh, 802.11ac is really not that much different than 802.11n. It has the uh, 256QAM protocol, which is not that commonly used because it needs a really, really clean RF environment for that to happen. It has the capability of using wider channels, but wider channels are something that is really not optimal for the enterprise in a lot of cases. They're great at home. Uh, for a home wireless router, it's great having the wider channels. But again, in the enterprise, it's, it's not that great. And so what I'm really saying to you is, even if you have an older Mac, if you have the pre-2013 Mac that's 802.11n, there's an excellent chance that you're gonna be able to capture perhaps the majority or perhaps even all of the data that's sent using 802.11ac. So, you know, even up there, even though up there it mentions that you kind of have to have a newer Mac to get 802.11ac, it, it, you still may be okay with, uh, uh, with an 802.11n capture device. Uh, the other big thing to note is that a lot of devices that support three stream data end up sending with two stream data. Three stream MIMO is another one of those things that can definitely work in a lab, can definitely work in a very, very clean RF environment, but in practice, a lot of devices that support three streams use two streams. 
I have an iMac at home, one of the brand new 5K Retina iMacs. Uh, I have yet to capture a three stream packet from that iMac. It, it just is almost always using two streams because I have a, a little Bluetooth speaker and uh, a number of other things in the home. So, um, you, you know, if, if you say to yourself, well, I only have N or I only have two streams, don't worry about it. You can still do a great capture uh, with a Mac device. Um, it, it, as far as actually doing the capture, there's really one strongly recommended way to do it, and it is a combination of Wireshark and an application called Wireless Diagnostics. Wireless Diagnostics is an application that comes with Mac OS X. You do not have to download anything special or anything like that. If you just search for Wireless Diagnostics, it's going to come up. In some older versions of Mac OS X, you might have to access Wireless Diagnostics from the Wi-Fi settings menu, but if you have the newer versions, if you have Yosemite or, or whatever the previous version was called, I'm forgetting Mountain Lion or something like that, whatever 10.9 was, uh, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to run wireless diagnostics, you'll be able to find it just by searching for that application's name. Um, so, so again, it's a combination of wireless diagnostics and Wireshark, and the reason why you want to do that is Wireshark allows you to see a live capture. So you can see everything that's coming in, you can set it so you only see data coming to or from one device if you're worried that one device is having a problem. You can see all the data on a channel if you're not exactly sure uh, what's causing the problem. So, so Wireshark allows you to see that data and what the wireless diagnostics application allows you to do is change channels. A big limitation historically uh, doing captures in Mac OS X was that you were stuck on a channel. I remember years back you had to even reboot your laptop to be able to change channels when you were capturing on Wireshark in Mac OS X. With wireless diagnostics, you can just use the wireless diagnostics app to change the channel for you while continuing to see the packets in Wireshark. Okay. I wanted to show you a little demo of what that looks like. Uh, the very first thing you have to do, it, again, it's, it's on the, whoops, it's on the little steps that are on that document, and, and I'll post the link to the document again that's, uh, that's on my Dropbox. Let me see if I can make those steps look a little bit bigger. Hopefully you can see that to some degree. You have to just execute a couple of commands uh, in the command prompt. Uh, the, the commands are on that document. I actually uh, took those steps directly from uh, Zaib, uh, wherever you are. Thank you for uh, post. Ah, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for posting those online. So it, it's just the two t commands uh, uh, that start with S-U-D-O. There's an S-U-D-O, uh, C-H-M-O-D command and then a longer S-U-D-O command that uh, I copied from Zaib, and then uh, you can copy from di this document if you want to. Uh, so you just have to execute those two commands. You, you can execute them in, a, uh, in an application called Terminal. If you just do uh, command space bar, you can type in T-E-R-M, and uh, you'll get the command Terminal. Once you execute those two commands, you can open up Wireshark, Show you Wireshark here. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble. Move, there we go, there. Now Wireshark's moving for me. Oh, Wireshark did not. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay, it looks like I lost Wireshark for some reason. Sorry, give me a second here. Ah, there's Wireshark. Okay, uh, so in the Wireshark application, once you've executed those two commands in the terminal, when you refresh your interface list, you'll be able to see the EN0 interface, if it's on a laptop, if it's on a MacBook. Uh, if you're using an iMac, it would be the EN1 interface. Bottom line is you just need to know which interface your, uh, uh, is your wireless interface. From there, you just go to the preferences in Wireshark. Gosh, the uh, resolution may make it, there we go. 
Uh, once you're in the preferences, you go to the capture preferences. And sorry, the resolution's making it a little bit difficult, but you just need to find the preference that is your wireless preference. In my case, it is EN0. You need to click edit, and there's this little checkbox here named monitor mode that has to be checked. So step one, execute a couple of commands. Step, one, step two, check the monitor mode checkbox in Wireshark. Uh, and then step three is really just starting a capture. That's what I'll do right here. Sorry about that, there we go. So I select the EN0 interface, I click start. Now I am capturing packets. Hopefully I can uh, show you all the channel here to show the changing channel. So you can see right now I'm capturing on channel 36. And the thing that makes wireless diagnostics so nice is it just allows me to change the channel that I'm currently capturing on. If I go to wireless diagnostics, there we go, wireless diagnostics coming up there now. I just did command and space bar to allow me to see that. This is what the wireless diagnostics application looks like. There's a window named sniffer that allows you to do your channel changes. And once I open up that sniffer window, if I choose start, then that will allow me to start capturing on whatever channel I choose. And actually I might have to, you know what, I might have messed this up when I close my laptop. I might have to re-execute the terminal commands here. Yeah, because wireless diagnostics is not starting. Okay, well, demonstration didn't work here because I uh, closed my laptop. But bottom line is that's, uh, uh, that's how you can set up the capture there. Uh, for those of you that uh, prefer to save a capture file, maybe you wanna send a capture file to someone that you work with who's a little bit more familiar with uh, wireless LAN protocols, you can also save captures directly from wireless diagnostics. I'll just close out of uh, that. So when I uh, begin this capture here, it looks like I'm set to channel number one. As soon as I click stop, there will be a file on my desktop for that capture. So I'll go to my desktop here just to show you that file. Whoops, that is not the right thing. There we go. Uh, and yeah, on the desktop, we can see 5.23 p.m. There's that little file with the W uh, CAP file name that is a uh, saved capture file. Uh, so if you want to save your packets, you can do that. Um, so, so that's what I, I would really recommend if you're, if you're looking to do a capture in Mac OS X. Again, you can do it completely free. The, the one downside is you do lose connectivity whenever a Wi-Fi adapter goes into monitor mode. Uh, you lose the ability to make connections. So that, that can be a little bit annoying if you're trying to test connectivity with an access point. It might force you to use a secondary device with your Mac laptop or with your Mac desktop. But, um, you know, it, it still at least gives you a way to do your captures. Okay. Um, and uh, how much time do I? Am I all set then? And uh, last little note, we're, uh, we're all going to the hockey game tonight. So uh, meet us in the lobby if you want to see the Dallas Stars and the Colorado Avalanche play. Uh, probably be about 50 bucks. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what tickets we can get. Thank you, Keith. Great. Thank you very much. You can come and swap out.